My name is David Craker. I work at the U.S. Census Bureau. I live in northern New Jersey. Um, and what I do and what we do at the Census Bureau is we come out and we give free presentations of, or workshops if people want them. It, it is totally free, whoever needs that. We do virtually as well. Um, and so I have a colleague who lives in Manhattan. She is away, so she sort of got me to come here early today, Saturday. So anyway, um, we do that. We will uh, do workshops and presentations and help people even in the evening if they want uh, virtual presentations and things of that sort. So I um, really want a group of people, you know, probably like at least five, five people in the group, but it does, that doesn't always work out. So, um, okay. So this is what we're going to do today. Um, I am going to, for about 20 minutes, go through um, some of those, the ideas of the data from the Census Bureau. And then after that, I'm going to give a little bit of a demonstration a couple of times repetitively. Okay, I used to be a foreign language teacher. I sort of want to kind of repeat. You want to see what I'm doing. You don't have to do anything on your phone or your computer, but if you want to, you can go ahead and try to do it. But then what we are going to do is a collaborative exercise. And so I'm going to select somebody from the audience and I already have my, my volunteer. And um, so I'm going to give you all a draw along and she can't she doesn't get to hear what the column is. And then she's going to come up here. So you, you are spared. All you do is, it's Simon says, you're just going to do what they tell you to do. Okay, so you're going to get a problem, all of you, and you have to get her to the solution. Okay, does that make sense? So hopefully we can... But there, we have a, a, a big wealth of knowledge here, and brain power, so we can do it. Okay. So um, once again, this is who I am. This is my um, my email address. In case you want that, probably now is a good time to take a photo. Um, if if you think you're going to need that, I think I have one or two business cards there. You can take a photo of the business card as well. Um, so we do, you know, after sales service, I'll call it, where we help you with the data. Okay, so I'm kind of a pacer, and you're going to see me coming and going up here to this to this cell monitor. All right, just so we know, the Census Bureau is actually a contractor. We uh, work with all these other federal agencies. They come to us. The people that you say, what do the people do when there's no 10-year census? A lot of those people are actually out doing work all the time as field representatives, um, and they're getting we're getting data for for HUD or for New York City. Department of Labor for CDC, and then we turn that data over to them that we collected for them under the, the, the way that they wanted that data collected. We give it to them, and then they put that on their website, okay? And so we, we don't see it again. It goes off to them, and they do the aggregation as they need to do that. So we do have a couple things down here. I put We have a few more than this, but <clears throat> I put these down at the bottom, and the, the bottom line there is the American Community Survey. And that's really um, the heart of what we're going to be working on today. So you probably think about that 10-year census, um, and this is it, and this is a snapshot in time, right? Remember that a couple of years ago, it was around April 1st, and it, we were under a pandemic, um, and we're still trying to get some of those numbers out. They're supposed to come out at the end of May. Um, but if you think back, we only asked 10 questions. So how much can we abstract? How much data are you going to get back? From the 10 questions we asked and some of them were really just what's your name and what's your birth date um so that is not really a lot of data you're going to get sort of hard numbers so you're going to get the number of people number of housing units people of this sex or that sex um the age groupings and that sort of thing so you will get that from that 10-year census uh, everything is accounted for so it is not a sample every housing unit has somehow been visited or accounted for okay um all right, let's think about this though. The, we used to have this thing called the long form. We don't have that anymore. Um, instead, we have what we call the American Community Survey. American Community Survey is taken every month of every year, and it was even taken during decennial. So some people may have got, they may have received both questionnaires, so they didn't know what was happening. This is what a questionnaire looks like over here, just so you know, are a part of the questionnaire. Um, the sample size for American uh, Community Survey, three and a half million addresses a year. Uh, that's about 1% of the population. Uh, uh, data is collected. First, we mail something out to you. It looks very innocuous when you get it, a, a warning. This is coming to your house, and you get this form that will look like this. And we're hoping you will either do it online or you will send the form back, okay? If you don't do that, the next month we are going to come knocking on your door and, um, you know, 
field representative is going to try to get you to answer the questions, okay? Um, all sorts of geographic levels that the data is available at, um, but the two for New York City, if you're thinking about New York City, the main ones are what we call colonists and tract, okay? And both of those are sort of statistical or, uh, you yeah, know, statistical methods are of releasing data back to you. So I'm going to show you Pumas and tracks today, and, and we'll sort of learn about that. Uh, data release uh, is yearly. Okay, so every year we release American Community Survey data, and we release one-year data and flag it. Okay, and I will explain that too. Once again, this is what the form looks like. I just want you to notice that we do not consider Hispanic to be a race. Okay, Hispanic is, you can be Hispanic, and then down here you can say I'm white or I'm black, I'm Chinese, whatever I am, and I am Hispanic as well. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Hispanic is on a race in the view of the Census Bureau, right? So many people will sort of conflate that and they give you mixed data back using our data, but that is not how we release it. Um, okay, American Community Survey, 72 questions. Uh, if you receive the American Community Survey or you know somebody gets it, please do it. Please, it, it will keep your taxes lower, okay? <laughs> um, anyway, we are happy if you answer most of the questions, okay? I'm not saying you have to answer all the questions, but if you answer most of those questions, maybe there's a question you're not comfortable with and you skip it, it's okay. Okay, just have to answer most of the questions. They are deep characteristic questions we're asking how much money you make. When do you leave your house to commute or to go to work? How do you commute to work? Do you work from home? Uh, all sorts of things like that. Um, and the thing that we are not concerned about in the American Community Survey is your name. So that sounds very harsh, doesn't it? We don't care who you are. That's not true. Um, we ask you your name. We ask you your birthday to, to get sort of the statistics. But once we've got all that data in there and it's been aggregated, your name is pulled off that form. It is we don't so we don't care about that. And some people say I don't want to give you my name to you. And we say okay, can we just call you person one, person two, person three, whatever's at the house? And that's okay with us. Okay, so just keep that in mind. If you meet somebody who gets an ACS uh, questionnaire and they don't want to do it, look, you can just tell them your name is person one, and that's fine. Okay, all sorts of tables we have in here. Um, and, and I am showing you the table method today that you download this data. You can bring it into CSV uh, if you want to. If you're doing a GIS, you can bring it into your GIS. Um, what I'm not showing you today is API, just so we're straight on that. Uh, so we have these tables B, C, S, DP. I'm going to show you the DP table today, but there's all sorts of kind of tables in there. Data from the American Community Survey is available down to a track level. So some people will tell you that they can get data at a block group level, you can get some data at a block group level, okay? The margins of error will be higher too. So the track is our showcase geography. That's the one that we really like people to use when they're trying to get down to a granular level, okay? Um, the flip side of that is that decennial census, remember I talked about that a couple of minutes ago, but that you can get the data down to a block level, yes. Could you define track level? Yes, I, I'm, I will. Okay. Thank okay, you. yes. So, um, okay, so let's look at the data first. So DP data, if you can see this, maybe I can, you know how to get rid of this thing. Here, I'll just put that in. Okay, all right, so DP tables, that means data profile. Okay, these are the Walmart table, tables, they have everything in them, a little bit of everything in there, but they don't delve into anything too granularly sometimes, okay? So we have all these social sort of things that are here um, and you'll be surprised sometimes what you're really looking for isn't there. Okay, like for example, language. We're really just saying do people speak English well or they don't speak English well or they speak Spanish or English and not much more than that. But then when you go looking for those other tables that I mentioned before, you can get into it a little bit more. Um, economic stuff, so how much people make, you know. Um, and then we have sort of the housing. So believe it or not, American Community Survey is not just about people, it is about housing. Okay, so when we go out there and somebody's not living in a housing unit or they're not home or it's vacant, we interview the unit. We go to the tax office and we try to figure out everything we can figure out about the housing unit because one quarter of the data is just about the housing unit itself, not about people. 
Okay, and then we have this sort of basic demographic data, which is very comparable to the decennial census. Okay, very similar to that, right? This is the, the little geography lesson I'm going to give you. Okay, and so my background is actually as a geographer and cartographer. All right, so every block in the nation after a 10-year census gets its own number. Can you imagine that? The Census Bureau has numbered every block in the country, okay? And it gets a centroid, right? The block nests within a block group, okay? And the block groups sometimes have some ACS data, okay? Blocks only have decennial. You can only get block data like a year that ends in zero, okay? ACS data you can get every year. Okay, you can get a little bit of information at the block group level, some basics. All right. Then the block group is nested within a track in the first tracks in the U.S. were developed in New York City. They were developed in Lower Manhattan, 1910. It was the Federation of Churches that came forward and said, we need something very stable from census to census to measure uh, demographics. And so they proposed this and they put forward the money for the city of New York. The Census Bureau adop adopted that. 1910, first tracks for New York City, okay? And then around 1940, the thing went nationwide, okay? It took around 10, 20 years to get it going nationwide, but this is a showcase geography. It is a statistical thing, it's very stable. We don't uh, move track boundaries for anybody, okay? We have a lot of developers coming and say, can you move it over one block so I can get a different number over here so I can build my CUM5 story building? We say, we're not moving it for anybody. So. If you ever look in Lower Manhattan, you see track number five or track number 10. They've been there for more than 100 years. Okay. So, um, but it, New York City was first and then big cities picked up on it and then the whole country, it just went countrywide. Okay, the tracks nest within a county. Sounds good, right? It isn't good for people in like Texas or uh, Atlanta because their cities are like tentacled. And they keep moving, expanding all the time. And so they'll get like a piece of a tract in their city and then the rest of the tract's not in their city. And we are not going to change those track boundaries for city boundaries. Okay, so the tracks, nests within counties, luckily for, for people in the Northeast, their municipal boundaries haven't changed in 100 years. So these things are kind of nested kind of nice and neatly up here, all right? Counties within the state, the state of California, and then within the U.S., all right? These are all the other kind of geographies that we have. Um, okay, so I don't know if we're all from New York City. Anybody from not from New York City? Who's okay? A few people. Um, so we have all these things: uh, zip code, tabulation area. So it's kind of pretty much a zip code. You can get data by zip code if you want to. You can get it by place, which would be a village or city in the state of New York. Minor subdivision, or also known as county subdivision for municipalities, uh, upstate New York, Long Island, and, and New Jersey, congressional districts, school districts, or pull -ons. public use microdata areas are these huge areas, and um, they are over 100,000 peop people, and they have more data in them. Okay, so this is what we're, we're thinking about here, all right? We have this problem here, 65,000, okay? Under 65,000 in population, whatever the area is, you have to use what's called five-year data. And that is an aggregation of data collected over five years and released every year in December, early December, okay? So you can get that every year. You can get that data. It's five-year data, but it will be from an aggregation or a pulling of data that we've collected over the past five years. So it's going to say something like 2017-2021 hyphen five-year data, okay? You need to keep in mind that if you're pulling the data every year, that the years that we collected the data are overlapping, right? By four years, by four years, whatever. So five-year data, usually the tract, you're always going to have to take five-year data. Some small counties, upstate places, five-year data, and small zip codes, five-year data. You have to take that. Above 65,000 in population, you have the option to take one-year data. So if the sample is now large enough, from the past year, so New York City or a camp like a uh, county, like Queens County, we'll say, our congressional district, you can get data every year. The data comes out at the end of September, it's one-year data. Okay, so you have that option. I say as a safety that you always said you want the five-year data because it's always a bigger sample, even if it's in an area over 65,000. I, I sort of suggest maybe you want to take that five-year data because you just get a bigger sample. 
Um, all right, and so we will look at Pumas a little bit today. Over 100,000 people, sometimes even over 200,000 people, and there is more data in there. Okay, so for example, uh, you will get like, I think it's like 60 languages or something that can be spoken in an area. They will all be listed there in the, the data for the Puma, but they won't be for these smaller areas, okay, smaller populated areas. So for people in New York City, the New York, New York City has been doing this for a very long time. They are aligning their community district, uh, aligning the Puma boundaries. They get one chance every 10 years and they align them to the community district boundaries. So when you go looking for that data, it pretty much aligns with your community districts or community boards, maybe you call them. So that's very handy for people in New York City. Yes. When you say that the uh, zip code population areas are pretty much zip codes, like why aren't they zip or like? They're, okay, that's a really uh, uh, good question. It's because when you have a zip code, you have a um, postman who's delivering from one post office and another guy from another one, and they're doing what is most convenient for that post office for the purposes of delivering mail. So here you might have a block, and on one side of the block, the guy from, I don't know, we'll call it uh, Greenpoint is delivering mail, and on the other three sides of the block, um, the postman from the other, whatever the other, we'll call Blue Point, he's delivering, <laughs> right? So he's delivering in two different zip, zip codes, right? So what we do, we can't, we can't sever a block. That's a container. So we take whatever the predominant population is for the zip code, whichever zip code it is, and we assign it that to the whole zip code. The other thing, if you are a mapping person and you go looking for zip code data and zip code shape files, you usually have to pay for those. Census Bureau is the only place I think you can get it for free. Okay, yeah. Uh, this is worth a basic question. Are census traps like roughly mean the same same like area land area we just stand about as normal land like every level <clears throat> no they're so census tracts are um they're they're kind of put together by a number of housing units and people we don't we want about four thousand people in a census tract so we we sort of keep them there and they've been there forever but if you get like census tract number 10 and since track number 10 gets too much population, we will subdivide and make it 10.01, 10.02. So you will see that sometimes, okay? And that's to let you know as you go back through time that used to be number t uh, census track 10. So they kind of came, like, uh, is that an amoeba? We used to study that in the science class. They keep splitting off sometimes. But we, there, you may see huge census track, like in Texas, but it's, all, it's a whole county. And like in New York City, Manhattan might be only four square blocks because they need about 4,000 people in them on average. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead. There. All right, so this is just something I don't think you really need this, but um, it's a hierarchy and that we like to tell us people, but when we are looking for data today in the portal, we are going to say, what is my unit of analysis? Okay, the unit of analysis will be, okay, I want a tract or I want a zip code, zip code tabulation area, or maybe I want a block group, or whatever it is. And once you alert the system of your unit of analysis, you then have to work down. So if you say my unit of analysis is tracked, you click on the button tracked, you say tracked, and then you go back up to the top and you start all over and you say nation, then what state is it in, what county is it in, and then you go to the track. Okay, so a lot of people don't do that. They just start trying to drill down from nation to state to county to track, and they can't do it because they didn't indicate their unit of analysis. Okay, so you have to indicate the unit of analysis, and this is sort of the way that you work through the puzzle to get to it, okay? But it, it becomes pretty evident as when you're doing it, and you're not, I don't think you'll be perplexed or anything. Um, okay, just what a table code looks like, I don't know that we really care, but we have a whole system like our own Dewey Decimal kind of system I'm not supposed to tell you this, but there's something called censusreporter.org. If you've ever seen that, and you go down to the bottom, it explains the tables really well. Okay, so if you went to censusreporter, kind of all one word, .org, and you go down the bottom and look at tables or table IDs, it will explain the table IDs to you. But I really want to point out here is that if you get a suffix on your table, it means you are dealing with one race. Okay, so we do have some racial breakouts in tables. And um, it could be very helpful. 
if you need to, to look at that. But you you want to make sure you're if you were looking for table B zero five zero zero three, and you accidentally chose like a, a suffix or B suffix, don't get mixed up. That means you're dealing with one race. Okay. And just. All right, so this is what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be working in this website, uh, a data portal. And the data portal is actually data.census.gov. And everybody says, why don't you give it a name? Um, I don't know. I think we may call it Explore Census Data. But all federal agencies are going this route where they're going to have something like data.hud.gov, data. Um, was a CB, um, I forget the, what that, uh, the CDC. CDC.gov, they have all these sorts of things. So they're going that route, not you know, only like, you know, a quarter of the federal agencies have gone that route, but um, they're trying to. Okay, so here we are, data.census.gov. That's the URL. The key to this is to start here, advanced search, okay? If you, you can go here and you can pump in data if you want, or you can pump, pump it in it. You can say Queens, Queens County, New York, I um, mean, say income or something like that, and it will come up with something for you. You have no control. It's a little bit like Google. You don't you don't know what's going to happen. You lose control. It comes up. It works really well on your phone, but you, you could be looking at something from 2000. You don't you don't know. You know you have to pay a lot of attention. So um, I usually go this method: advanced search. Okay, and when you click on advanced search, it opens a whole another window for you, and you get all these filters. And you can you can control you're the master of your own data. Okay, so um, advanced search. We have data going back to the year 2000 in this portal. Anything else? You're going to have to go looking for these things called libraries that have books and stuff like that. You have to go look. But we we've sort of scanned it. We've put them online, and you can get to them. And there's some other websites where they go back for time and have this. Okay, so we're looking at ACS. But all our surveys are getting put into this data portal. So the decennial population estimates, a few other things are getting put in here little by little by little. Okay, so don't think it's just ACS. It's, it's everything that's in here. Okay, so any questions before I go on? Yes. Dick, a comment. Have you used your data gen? So this yeah. Mm -hmm. These are the little webinars, and yeah. they used it on one year to help me, but then the census format had changed so that it was no longer matching up with the data gems webinar and it became, I was like getting lost because there were things that were skipped. So my question is, are you going to be updating the data gems webinars in order to match? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I don't know the answer to that. I think they, they've left those data gems up, the old ones, right? Yeah. yeah and they, they should be pulling them down, but I don't know why they're not pulling them down. So, do you, uh, I mean, Susan, do you mind just after the class giving me your name? Because my boss is asking for people who are using Census Academy and Data Gems. That was last week, and she wants someone's na people's names who might give her feedback. Yeah. If that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So, um, let me just move on. Okay, so this is, this is the end slide, right? So up with the secure. So thank you. All right. And let me just go out of this if I can. Okay. So here. And okay. This is what we're shooting for. Okay. We're, we're hoping to get here. Well, maybe not all of us. Maybe some of us just want the, the raw data. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. So this is, I'm going to get rid of this. Or maybe I'll just start another tab. So how do we get there? We're going to go here, data.census.gov. Good notes here. Okay, so here we are, right? And, and what do we do? And so that's that's a problem. We get here and it looks like, it's like, well, what do I, how do I start? So the key to starting is right here, advanced search. And when you get to advanced search now, right, you're getting these options over here on the left. Right, these are your filters, and so my my suggestion is to go to years first, okay. And the top one is is usually never there. That means we're getting ready to release it next at the end of the year, okay. So you need to go to 2021, and then from 2021, 
Um, you need to let it know what survey it is, okay? So it, did you see there were a lot of them and they sort of went away? It knows what's available in 2021, okay? So let's just, let me change something. So if I went back here, I unchecked 2021. If I said 2020 and I went to surveys, notice it knows that the decennial data is available, okay? And just so we know, this is it right here. Redistricting data. Okay, that's what's there right now. And you can go through and then you would load a geography and you would look at that data. So let me just do that really quick to show somebody how that works. So I will just pick one county. And so notice that was my unit of analysis. I said county. And now I have to come down here to New York. And I, I you know, let me just say Bronx County. It's right there. Okay, so those things are over here in my filters. And I come way down here to the right. Right here, you can see that. It's a blue button. It says search. And I say search. And then this is what is available right now. So I think after May, they were going to parse this out a lot more. So just really quickly, I click on that. This is so you see what a table looks like. I close those chevrons. It opens the table a little bit more. If you had two screens and you had an Excel spreadsheet open, you could just sort of highlight this if you want to. You can copy and you can paste it right into the Excel. If you want to go that route, okay? But this is sort of just a basic table from the decennial and a couple of things you can do here, you can, you know, download into Excel, CSV, a zip file, or and this is what I urge people to do. This share right here is a copy. So you can just copy the link to that and paste it into something. And then, you know, people can open it. So if you found something you want to send to somebody, you can just send them that link and they can open it. Okay. Um, so this is sort of the basics of finding decennial. But I'm just going to go back over here, upper left to my filters, and I say, okay, I don't I don't want the decennial information. I don't want frogs. In fact, I don't even want 2020. I want the year 2021. Okay, so we're gonna going to look at something like that. So I always say you need the year first. All right. And then from there, we're going to go to geography. Okay, and then what sort of geography do we want? And so I'm going to show you the census tract first. Okay, so I'm clicking on my unit of analysis. And it might take a while to come up. Okay, there we go. And then we come down here to New York. All right, and so I'm going to come down here to Queens County. Okay, and let's see what happens. It gives me all the tracks in Queens County. Notice this 1.01, 1.02, 3, 4. That all used to be track number one. Okay, just so we, we kind of have an idea of how this worked. <clears throat> so I'm selecting all tracks in Queens County. <clears throat> I'm going to close this. And I know that it's over here in my filters. It's right there. And sort of what sort of data am I looking for? And so I'm going to remain true to what I showed you before. I'm clicking here on surveys, American Community Survey, five-year data, and I'm going to go with that data profile right there. But these other tables are there, the detailed tables, if you wanted to look at those. Or if you don't even select that, it will just give you everything. Okay, so if you don't select ACS, it's going to, it'll just show you all sorts of tables that are there. Okay, um, <clears throat> so here we have <clears throat> excuse me, different things that we can look at. So let's look at a table. So here we have the demographic and housing estimates. We have social characteristics. We have selected economic characteristics. So uh, let's look at the economic characteristics. So you get an idea of what's in one of these tables. And so this is what I want you to see. This Queens is a big place, right? Lots of tracks, lots of people, lots of traffic. Um, and so look at this. It says, open the table anyway. <laughs> okay, so this is just a government thing. Okay, slow down. Table's too big. No, it's not. We can do it. There it is. Okay. So you just need to know when that comes up, there's a little button down there that says open the table anyway. And I would just want to tell you, you can open a massive amount of data. Like this is all the drags of Queen's County. That's nothing. Like sometimes I say, I want all the tracks for the whole state of New York. And it, it will take a while, but it will open, okay? 
So this is what a table looks like. We, we give you an estimate. The DP tables are some of the only tables that give you percentages, okay? So we give you the total number, people 16 and over in this trap. This is just one draft, right? Um, and then as I move over to the right, there's all these different tracks. It just goes through the whole thing, right? Um, let me go back over here to the left. Okay, so let's just look at this a little bit. If I can grab it, yeah, there it is. Okay, you get the estimate. We always like to give you that margin of error, percent and percent margin of error. If you don't want to look at the margin of error, and most people don't, they just click on that button and we're good, okay? So um, <clears throat> I do like this table because you get percentages, all right? And, um, once again, you can share it. So if you click on that, you can grab, copy that, and take it and send it to somebody if you wanted to. You can download it straight away if you want to do that. All sorts of things um, with the table. <clears throat> but let's look at a table. And so we have employment status, civilian, who's in the civilian labor force. Okay, what does that mean? That means probably people who are in the army or are incarcerated, I think, are not in here. Okay, and just so, so we know. Uh, <clears throat> then we have a lot of information, but I'm looking for something that's kind of new to us. Here it is right here, worked from home. Okay, we didn't used to have that as a question, but now we do. And then look up here, 2021. So think about that, going back five years in data, we collected a few years before the pandemic. Okay, so this is a five-year data, but nevertheless, it's there. Okay, there is some data there. And then we have, you know, what kind of occupations are they in? The industry that the people are in? Kind of class of worker? Their incomes? Okay, and then you get like the median income, the mean income, and then with earnings, with Social Security, and then you get sort of families living together. Uh, Non-family units, if you have three grad students living together, that's a, a non-family unit. Household. Health insurance. Do they have health insurance? Do they not? What kind of health insurance? Uh, unemployed, not in the labor force. So all these sorts of things are here. Um, but so that's that's what you can kind of do. You can find a table like this and you can look for something that's of interest to you. And so I did, um, I'm going to show you how to map it. <clears throat> did you see what I did? I clicked on a button that said map. Okay. And you sort of wait, and it will map. And this is what's called a choropleth map. Okay, it's just sort of uh, using using color to show where there's more or less of something, right? And so what this map has done, it took the first number at the top of the table, and it mapped it. So over here on the left, it says variable, and it just sort of did this population 16 years and over the estimate. Okay, but if I want to do the work from home. Let me see if I can find it. Worked from all. There it is. So we can either have an estimate or a percentage. So I will see what happens if I choose a percentage. Sometimes that percentage doesn't always work. Uh, it's not to my liking, but um, for the most part, it, it does work. So this is letting you know where you have uh, parts of the county where more people work from home than elsewhere. Okay, so you can just then click on it, we'll just click on this track, and it will sort of tell you what that percentage is in that tract. Okay, so there it is over there. If you want, you know, you can zoom into this a little bit more, and once you zoom in, you kind of start to see the streets that are in that area, and over here is actually a base map. You can turn that on, it gives you a little bit more information if you need to see that, and the, the coloration comes up, okay. Um, Oh, that's how you, you would map it. Um, if you are, are there any GIS people in here? There are. Okay. So if you're going to map something like this, um, what I'm going to do is actually go back to the table right here. Click on the table. Go back. View, view the table. Table's too big. No, it's not. Um, okay. If you're a GIS person, you need to be using Chrome and you need to uh, use a zip file. And you download that, and that way you get your geo IDs. Okay, just okay. Like Chrome, I don't know. Okay, <laughs> um, I, I think you could use you could try it with another, but we'll, they, we've just been advised Chrome works better with this. But yeah, um, and the geo ID, I don't don't know why. 
Sometimes it comes at the beginning of the table. Sometimes it's at the end of the table. So I'm just warning you. All right. So that was sort of how we, we would look for tracked data. But let's go back over here to our filters. Okay. And then I will, I'm going to just clear all the filters. Clear. Okay. Yeah. Can you look at different data profiles at the same time? Um, would you be able to see like the um, social and economic and demographic data profile at the same time? You have to like, download. You have to download them. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. And then, sorry, one more question is um, the margin of error. You say I would don't pay attention, but no, I, I don't. I don't. I say a lot of people don't pay attention. <laughs> I didn't say don't pay attention to. <laughs> I mean, when you have like plus or minus seven sixty four, that suggests to me that they're. It, it's not quite certain there's. Yeah. Yeah. So the question was the margin of error. Um, should we, you know, to what extent do you pay attention to that? Right. So I don't have, I'm not a statistician. I don't have a good answer to that. Um, I tend to say if your number is 50 and the margin of error is higher than your 50, higher than your base number, don't, I wouldn't use it. That's kind of what that we say, but I've heard, um, other things like if, if the percentage is too, like it's more than 20%, don't use it or something. But that's a this thing on social um, census reporter. They sort of report the margins of error in there that way. So I can't really answer the question. Um, but it's, it's, I think it's up to you to look at that and say, I think it's too high or too low. Or you never going to say it's too low. Say it's too high. But when I see a plus minus 764. It means on either side of the base number. So if you see if a, the base number is, let's say, 5,000 and you see 764, it means it could be 764 to either more than the base number or less than the base number. Yes. I have a question. I, I've used the simple, but I've never done multiple tables. So I'm taking a stab at this. Is it possible if you link or download, let's say, two different surveys to then join them on the census staff or to do like the star mapping between the two tables? If Okay, so if you downloaded tables to the census tract level or the same geography, you, uh, you can attach them to that geography. I don't think you're going to be able to... A DPO2 table is not going to look like a DPO5 table. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me just show you real, I'll go off on a little tangent here of the year. I'm going to select 2021. No, actually, no. 20, 20, 20. Okay, so I'm going to show you Pumas, but I do, I do want to show you something really quickly. Uh, let me just take, um, county. And we'll just take Arkansas. I don't know Somewhere in Arkansas. Hopefully it works. Okay. Just say Arkansas. But I do want to show you one something here is uh so i had shown you before um surveys and i went to american community survey five-year data data profile and i selected this dpo5 or whatever i selected and here it is oh okay. doesn't like me uh, there it is so here here it is up here but I, what i want you to see can, I don't know if you can see this up here in your URL. You know, you can change that URL to, so if you know you want DPO4, you just backspace and say DPO4, enter. And now it gives you the DPO4. Okay, so you can go DPO4, DPO3, DPO2, as long as it's in the same series. Okay. It, does that help anybody? Yeah. yeah. We're verging into API territory. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, when you're like building these tables, uh, looking at different years, uh, are you able to have like multiple years and see like compares? Yes. Yes. So, okay. If I had not, uh, if I had not chosen the year 2020 and I go to download the, t the table, it is going to offer me the chance to download multiple years. At one time. Is that, is that what you mean? Um, yeah, that and like, I guess also if it will show you like the, the difference between. Yeah. The, yeah. With that. 
Okay, so that's a good question too. All right. And, um, so here we have ECS five year data, Baxter County, 2020. I'm just going to get rid of this filter. And this is something, I guess this is why you come to a live session because nobody tells you this anywhere else. So we have these things called CP tables and I think they work with CP zero. They're called comparative, uh, profiles. So I put it up here, I just put CP0, it tells you what there is. So here's comparative economic characteristics, let's see if it comes up. Uh, okay, it might not come on. Well, I'm not gonna give up. Just keep clicking on it, believe in. <laughs> just be patient, but then you, you can have something like this. It's sort of telling you the last iter five year iteration versus this iteration, right? So that's called a comparative uh, profile. Um, and then wherever it's saying there's a spike or there's a significant uh, statistical difference, it puts a little asterisk here. Okay, whatever that means, whether it's up or down. Okay, I don't know if that's meaningful to you. Okay, all right, so you can do that. So that's called comparative profile CP, and then notice what I did. I put it up here. I put CP0, and then I chose something, and I put it over here in my filters, and I locked it. So I can't get rid of it. So to get rid of it, you just sort of come up here, you backspace, get rid of it, and then just say search again, and then it just brings you back to here. Okay, that's pretty quick. I mean, going pretty quick. So I can clear my filters here, or I can come here and just click on the logo and just brings you back to square one, right? So we have advanced search. And I come in here, year again, I'm going to go to the year 2020, and this is for Pumas. Because the 2021 Puma data that we have out there right now is not, uh, it's got some issues with it. So we're still working on it. So 2020 is what we have right now. Um, I'm going to go here to geography. I do want to show you how to do this. So notice up here, we have um, two different ways to look for geographies. We have this button or the summary level. And some people remember their summary levels. They remember that they get a number. If you're a GIS person, by the way, this is the number that's at the front of your, your GOID. Um, okay, and so I'm coming down here, and I know my Pumas are all the way down in the, I think it's 700s. It's, don't, don't get dizzy. Um, there it is, 795. Public use microdata area. Okay, and so I'm going, I indicated what I want, and then I'm coming here to New York, now I'm going to go to Queens. Actually, Pumas are nested within the state, not by county. But New York City did this cool little thing. You, so look, you have to go through the whole thing, looking through the list for the whole, the whole state. But you can come up here and you can say, okay, I just know I need NYC hyphen. And, there, and then if I just say Queens, it's there. Okay, so you're just going to come, you do have to check them off. Okay, and we're going to see what this looks like. Okay, and we just see if I got them all. I did, and I'm going to come down here to the right, I say search. And so now we have all these tables that are available. I did not say DP table or anything, but let me just um, take one of those. Okay, and actually into the five here. DP. Okay. By the way, the, the Puma, the 2020 data is only five years because of the, the pandemic. We didn't have enough good data collection that year. So, okay. Um, we're just going to look at this. So economic, we can look at, we can open housing, but let's look at social. Okay. And so here we have this information over here. Um, and it, it's actually a, a really good sample. Okay. And we can come down here and just look, it has all sorts of things, people marrying, fertility, grandparents, um, school enrollment, you know, educational attainment. And, uh, yeah, all, all sorts of things here. And you can kind of look up, you know, where people are from, you know, a language group, that sort of thing. And then we have ancestry here, okay? And so let's, let's do this, let's look up. Uh, See, so now it's very, Kind of predicated on uh, European ancestry, unfortunately. 
So let me just go back one. Go back to my filters and say, okay, wait a minute. I don't want the DPO4 because I know it's here somewhere. All right, so I'm going to come down here to demographic. So sometimes it's in, it'll be in one table and not in another, and I don't, I don't know why since it's dead that. So here we have, I'm going to look for Korean. Okay, let's see what we should get for Korean, all right? So let's, we don't even know what the, you haven't seen what these Pumas look like, right? But this is what they are. Okay, they're, and they correspond. Notice they have the community district number two, community district number four. So it corresponds to those, right? And I need to come here to my variable. And right here, come down the variable and say, okay, wait a minute, I want Korean. Let's see this here. Okay, there it is. I can get the estimate, the number, or I can get the percentage. I'll just take the estimate. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to emphasize um, and, and clarify. My experience is that Pumas are very close to community districts, but they do not. That's exactly correspond. Yes, that's correct. It's difficult to make comparisons pre and post because because the geographic boundaries at each census change. What's at a Puma? Is that is that when you pre and post? But that they sort of like 2010, 2020. Uh, census that the, that the Puma bets pot yes I've been do change a little bit yes and they're this year that's why I can't get the data yet they're changing them over a little bit but what I will tell you is New York City has the the ratings of the ones for New York City okay so they work with the Sun Spirit and Sun Spirit puts out these mandates that are a little bit hollow, hard for them to follow and but they do their best and every time they're getting those boundaries closer and closer to the community district so when you see the new ones come out probably i don't know it might be not till summer but um they're probably gonna be closer than they ever were before just so you know yeah so these are still the the pre-2020 uh puma districts but let's just see what they look like so here it's giving us a number and it's telling us in this community district there are 19,400 whatever, people of um, Korean, uh, I, I'm going to say descent, okay, or ancestry. So you can go through and you, you can look at things this way if you really wanted to. And sometimes there's like a, a little extra bit of data in these tables uh, that you would not have known about. Okay, so this is how you do the pumice. Um, how much time? Okay, so I don't know, if did I... Um, what do you think? Are you confused? We're going to do an exercise together. So um, I'm going to close this. And this is what we're going to do. Okay. Hold on. Okay. So Jody, you're, you're, you're my victim, right? You are. You're going to help us. You may not be the best person for this. I okay. volunteered. Okay. That's all right. You, you got volunteered, right? right? Yes. Okay. But so... Um, I mean, can you just wait in the hallway? Yes. Because you don't get to hear what the... the uh, okay, so this is what we're going to do. We are going to, since um, yesterday was... school was yesterday? Was, then, then, God, yeah, I sh right, I should remember, right? Send. Okay, so we're going to look for people of Irish descent. Okay, that's the first thing we're going to do. And we're going to look for the year... So you want to write it down? 2021. We're going to look for the year 2021. And we're going for... Um, I think we're going for Brooklyn. What do you want to do? Brooklyn or Queens? Brooklyn. Brooklyn? Okay. So we can Brooklyn. Okay. So remember that's Kings County. Uh, okay. So we want all the tracks in Kings County, New York, and we want the highest percentage of Irish ancestry. Oh, no, well, can we swap, swap, let's swap that, because I looked this up already. Let's, we're going to do Queens count, because you're going to be surprised. Maybe you won't be surprised, but to me, it was a big surprise. Like, where the people of Irish, so, so, tracks, all the tracks of Queens County, 2021, Irish ancestry. Okay, and it's at a DP table. Okay, so I'm not telling you which DP table. Okay, so there's only four. Well, we get there. We know it's not going to be economic, so we know it's not going to be housing. So you have, she's, you're going to have to help her look for it. Okay, so this is the goal. So you're running a Jody to that point, and then she's going to map. Did you know, remember how to map it? She's going to map it, right? And then I didn't show you. You can control the colors, and I didn't really show that. When we get there, we'll we'll look at that too. Okay, but we're going to try to get to this point together. Is that okay? Okay. So she doesn't know what it is. So you have to tell her. 
Go ahead, you bet you come. Come on then. But they raise our hand, then get. No, it's just yell it out. Yeah, ball. Yeah, just uh, it's like a race. Okay, so Jody, you're gonna take the reins. Okay, so here you, you, you. Okay, how does she get there? She doesn't even know which is what she's been. Advents. Years. Years. Um, where's the years? And and don't let her. What you guys tell her? They're the years down at the bottom on the left. Oh, you're for what? Into what court? Twenty twenty one. Okay. Now what? Here. Chad machine. Now what? You want to use surveys first? Yeah. You need to do either one first. Census tracking. You need the step. You need the cold. You need an ounce. Yep. Census tracks. Census track, okay? Yes. yes. All right. Now what? We are. Oh, we want to stay home. <laughs> Forward. Now what? Queens count mm, bad. What's with it? Is it? Oh, I have to not up off the weeds. Okay. Now what? All sense of the dots. Oh, okay. And now, yes, sir. How is it having grades, right? Where's surveys? A lot. Thank you. Okay. Dana? Trevor Bullets. Yes. Now what? Search. She arrived all over it. I have. Speak to you. I think it's social character. I mean, yeah, the social character in it. Let's start with that. Tag. It might be out five. Open the table. 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 Pop. Did the button. Scroll down to you can even the chevrons at the top. Yeah, you can like the line lineup. Okay, hit the chevron on the top. There's a few right. orbers of the left to appear at two. And very yeah. And then yeah, click on the two little arrows and said go from the left. Just so you can close like oh on the right. Wait a bit. Yeah, the other brain click that one. Men is style this. Okay. And that's street. It was great, Jody. Alrighty. How do I get down to ancestry? Collapse the household by Kai. Oh, thank him. Or you, or you can also just scroll down. Flame. So, Jody, I didn't tell them what tables, and so what they look for may not be in this table. Okay. What we're looking for is Irish descent. Oh, my. So, world origin of birth, we still consider Ireland part of Europe, regardless of their opinion. No, but it does have children. Oh, so we have to keep going. Ancestry. There we go. The reign of map. So, hit the map. You want under this green area. <laughs> right? Can I change the color? <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's change your color straight away. Let's do that first. How do you change your color? I don't know. You get on doors. I don't know. The towers. I don't know. I don't know. Plus how I saw it. It says, well, you got it tall. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you can make it less transparent. You can make it, take that, yeah, go to the right, to the right. Oh. Yeah. You know, make it really. It's 100%. Damn. Yeah. And just click up on the white. Yeah, there you go. No, I live here. Fools. Looking at what? Yeah. Oh, variables. We need more variables. Sorry, Irish. Search up here. I don't know. Like the button, my name. Yeah, right there. Uh, okay. We're looking for percentage. Uh, percentage. Wait, what was the other percentage? It was, it was Scottish. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can do that one. Do you want that one? We just want Irish. Put a spot out. <laughs> All right. So is this which or what? Yeah, I mean, like, what's the darkest? I mean, we'll go over here. That's what's in the rock way, is down. <laughs> what a surprise. Actually, main court. Port. I mean, my mind a little According to this. Oh, I didn't go there. Thank you. 32%. Yeah. 38%. Okay, so we all are. We have some time, right? Just stay there, Jerry. So let me just show you how some. 
Click on this. The one says classes. And do you know what a histogram is? So you get a histogram out, yep. right? And so you can control this. But up here where it says data classes, make it two. Just click on one of the blue arrows to the left. Oh, uh, okay. Just bring it down to two classes. Okay, just two classes. Now take your, your little bar and drag it over to the right so that you have just the one isolated incidence, right? Go past 50%, I think. Suck. Okay, let go. Let's see. So we have somewhere a track that has 58.7% Irish. So we're by Reese part. <laughs> so I think, yeah. Jody, you can click up on the, the wife part now. This part? Uh, a little bit higher. I think it will put away the... I said you just had class. Yeah, I didn't class. Yeah. Right yeah. I right, click on class again. Yeah. No. Yeah, the button, right? The button at the top. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now if you want to... Back it. Thanks. That's like a private neighborhood, I'd be. Do you look like a sedentary or a private number? Yeah, and you can zoom in. Is there a, a wheel on the mouse? On a mouse? Yeah. Yeah, so just keep zooming in. And then you can drag the map around too. And then there you go. Is that, is that logical? Three, yeah, three. 58.7. Yeah, and then, uh, okay, so click on, click on the, the track again. Okay, and then click on view profile. And it will open this thing for you that gives you all sorts of information. Oh, wow. It's it's coming up. Nice. <laughs> yeah. But but I I don't know if I trust this. It says population and so yeah, you did click the right track. Oh yeah, it's I think that's that's hard to so. Oh, did we get the wrong oh I click the wrong track the part. Oh well, yeah. yeah. So if I go back, I have to click here. Yeah. Then do that. Oh I see. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, give you this kind of information. And if you get here, so I heard like at the place of like, it's like, I don't want to be here. <laughs> I don't want this data. So you just go to your URL, go over to the left. And just, oh, no, no. I mean, the arrows on the left of the URL. Go to the left, just hit back. And it brings you back to your dot. Okay. So, um, all right, we're good unless you want to stay and I get another problem. But <laughs> what do you listen to? Thing or why do some yeah? I would be interested. I, I was exploring this for a class assignment. Um, one of the questions on the American Community Survey is about housing characteristics and housing type, right? And one of the answers is people living in like boats, RVs, vans, yeah. homes. Yeah, I was curious how that looks in New York City. Well, we can go to the boat basin. Seventy C. Well, did you find data on that? <laughs> Yeah, I don't think we have that broken out like that. I think it's just housing unit. I think it's like, do you own it or do you rent? Yeah. But I don't think we break it out by housing because there's too many types. Sorry, and you're teaching a class? Yeah, well, I'm taking a class. I'm, I'm keeping a class on interactive data visualization and I'm teaching a class this summer. Okay, yeah. So I wanted to see if it was possible to introduce that to my student. Um. Yeah, you want maybe you want to email me or something. I can kind of look it up. Yes, yes. I can. Um, yeah, I'm curious. Like, if you have, if I'm curious about like pre-pandemic versus post-pandemic things, is the uh, is it granular enough? Is the data granular enough to show that? Um. Okay. So the only, the one thing I could, uh, yeah, it could be. You're you're going to see if you're looking at the five-year data. You're going to see the data changing. So probably pre-pandemic. The work from home characters, as an example, was kind of low. And now um, it's getting higher and higher and higher because it's like partially the data was pulled from before the pandemic, but now we're getting to years after the pandemic and it's just getting higher and higher. And then we do have to change uh, questions sometimes. So that work from home is kind of a new question. And the other thing is, so now I, I would look to the question is that what is the question is, where did you work most of the time last week? It isn't what you do all the time. It's like last week, right? And then what do people do? And so now there are, people are working hybrid. So we're half in the office, half home. And that question is not on there. 
So we, we probably have to adapt to some of these questions. It's very slow adaptation, but um, the, the data catches up, but it's a little slow. Okay, so to clarify, like you said five and 10, so does that essentially mean that like there's kind of some smoothing, but it's like what the pandemic do is like a sh sudden change in some patterns, right? But like, yeah, it's by grid data, it's kind of like smoothing out. It's smoothing out, yeah. Now, if you went looking for a uh, Puma and you went looking for one year data, so maybe you look at the 2019 data and then you look at the 2021 data for the work at home, I'm sure that you're bought, that's different because you collected that data over one year, you will probably see a higher, I don't know, and that's one year data. So just keep in mind, if you're looking at an area for one year and five year data, the same area, you're going to see two different numbers. Right. Yeah. Um, somebody asked something in that question. Oh, yeah, go ahead. If you wanted to enhance the micro block of high school culture number and dating, if you wanted to test a prediction of high school graduation and crime in an area, um, could you do that using the census? Yeah, but we don't do it. We don't ask about crime. Okay. So you can look for the high school graduation. You can get that data from us. So that is in there. Like, you know, the highest in this area, what percentage of people graduated from high school, that sort of thing. So that data will be here. Um, but we don't ask about crime. I know currently the data, the Census Bureau is opening for comment to the public about how a working group about changing the race and ethnicity characteristics of the census. I was wondering, I don't know what to say, what do you think conversations will be? Can we adapt more rows and fields because it might possibly be more another selected, more graduality? And what the implications might be for redistricting minority and upper redistricting? And if I can comment on that, um, uh, data-wise, every every line in a uh, data table, everything that's in there costs money. So you rent the fabric, baby. So sometimes we we can't do it because they're limited with money. Um, and then there also is this whole thing about the data that we release. To some extent, there has to be another federal agency that uh, needs to know. Okay, so that's part of the equation. But I, I do hear you, and we do change things going forward, and we do sometimes get sort of uh, two things put in there. So since we, as Sensor, are going out there and, you know, trying to get they, um, feedback, comments from people, there's some sort of intent to change. Okay, I don't know. I think what you're talking about is one of the decennial, though, right? The 10 years since? Yes. But it will, it will carry over. over about it, yes. yes. It will carry over to us, yes, anyway. So there's some sort of intent to change that the Census Bureau wants to do that. What you do have to remember is New York City is not the rest of the country. So we have you have seen a terminology that you are not comfortable with, that doesn't mean somebody in another part of the country doesn't flies into that. Okay, so um, we did we I took my wire from surfing. Uh, you know, we used to have, um, uh, for African American, there was some other terminology on there. I think maybe we did away with it, but until the last census, we had to keep it on there because older generations, um, uh, people of color in the South used a different terminology. And so we, we had to keep that on there to sort of be in their comfort zone a little bit. Um, so we have all sorts of things like that. And then another thing I just want to point out. So my my wife is um, she is from Brazil and she does not understand the idea of race. And my children, um, my two daughters, refer to themselves as brown. So that to me seemed like a new terminology that uh, people who are younger use. And if people start filling that in enough on the census form, the census bureau starts saying to itself, "Okay, we need to now ask the question with that terminology in there." I mean, it even release the data that way. So we're not like not paying attention. We're paying attention. We also do with um, people who are immigrating to the country. If we get high surges like the Rohingya, um, if we get start getting a lot of those and they're replying to ACS, then we say, aha, we now need to start releasing this as a data set. It has to get pretty high. Okay. So it is average cost money. They cost money. Yeah. Yes. I was just going to ask, going, can you say a little bit more about the process, like when you have to make changes, like would 
you have to deal in what approval I have to get and at the end like how long does it take it's like an act of god <laughs> <laughs> so i don't i don't really know the total answer to that but i know that they do testing and part of the testing is simply on the question remember i showed the form before and they're trying to test the question how do people really how will they respond to the question and then can they get the data variables that they need from that question okay so that's part of the way and and uh, i will tell you this it's sort of so sometimes i have to go to our headquarters in washington and they'll say oh well while you're here for this meeting we need some people to do testing <laughs> and then put you in this like room and have people who study psychology and you know, sociology, and they have formulated things and say, okay, we're giving you 10 minutes to answer these questions, and you and, and it could you no know, help. And then you have to work through it, and, and they're trying to see, if, is this logical? Will it work? So I don't want you to think that we just, you know, write it all. I, I'm telling you, the Sun's Bureau really does a lot of investigation in how to do questioning. Yeah, I think it's a whole field somewhere that some be studied, but um, it is it is very in depth. Yes, I was wondering. Um, if, uh, for example, wanted to study with meat commute time, but I wanted to break it down by like occupational type and gender. Uh, uh, like, she might be there. I I kind of think it's not though. But you know, I want to tell you, it doesn't mean we don't have the data. We we may have the data. We can use it for it. If, if you're if you're looking for things and you're not kind of sure, but you're kind of get in something kind of granular, I would advise you looking at this Puma level first because there is more data. There are more extra tables and extra data points that are in there. So if you're looking for something, it might at least be at Puma level. And then once you establish and find that table, if there is a table, then you want to drill down and see if it's at the track level as Spodner did it. Okay, so if we just, if I wanted to, let's say, connect, like, multiple different tables that, like, have questions, like, that kind of thing, like, it has to be done on the level of some sort of geography first. Yes. Yes. Uh, any other questions? I guess everybody's hungry. Thank you. Okay. So there are a few stickers left if anybody wants stickers or just dabbing yours and then eat. that all. Did everybody have my email? Thank you, Thank you.